I'm sad, guys. We have a problem here. We need to make a DFA using the dreaded product construction. Ugh. But fortunately, we can make it easy. Want to see how? I think you do, don't you? All right, so how do we do this here? So we got two languages, L1, where all the strings in 0, 1 star start with 0, L2, all the strings contain a 1, and we are destined to make a DFA for the union of the two using the product construction. So how do we do this? So here is Ryan's two-step technique to use the product construction. So the first step is make a DFA for L1 and L2. So how do we make a DFA for L1 and L2? So L2 is pretty easy. So let's put L2 right here. And I'm going to have it states Q0. Well, if it's just a string of zeros, well, we should never accept it because it must contain a 1. So I'm going to have a self-loop here on 0. And if it has a 1, I'm going to go to a state where I will always accept. So no matter what the rest of the string is, I'm going to accept it. And then for L1, well, if it starts with a 1, we should never accept. So for L1, I'm going to call its states R0 and so forth. So if it starts with a 0, then we should always accept. And if it starts with a 1, then we should always not accept the string. So we have a uh, dead state here. Okay, so how can we use the product construction easily without having to think too hard? So notice that we have a, a DFA on two states right here and a DFA on three states right here. So whenever you're using the product construction, is always the product of the number of states, hence where the name comes from. So there are two states here, three states here. So in the end, last I checked, I think two times three is equal to six. So in the end, I'm going to have six states. And what are those six states? They're going to correspond to the pairs Hence, again, product, Cartesian product. So I'm going to have the pairs Q0, R0. So that's going to be the name of the state, Q0, R0. Q0, R1. Q0, R2. Q1, R0. Q1, R1. Q1, R2. Every pair of states. So let's write out what those states are. So Q0, R0 is going to be a state. So then I'm going to have Q0, R1 as a state, Q0, R2, if I can draw a 2 as a state. Then I'm going to have a Q1 column, then Q1, R1, and Q1, R2. So those are my states. So now we got to think what does the DFA need? It needs a start state. Well, what's the start state here? I think it's going to be Q0, R0. Why? Because those are the start states in the original ones. So this is going to be my start state. We'll deal with final states later. So let's do the transition function. So how would you actually use the transition function between all of these states? Well, all you have to do is from each of these pairs, figure out what the DFAs originally did. So let's look at this state Q0, R0. So this corresponds to state Q0 in the first, in the first DFA and R0 in the second DFA. Well, Q0, what does it do on 0? It goes to Q0 because of the self-loop. And R0, what does it do? It goes to R1. So in my mind, I'm thinking Q0, 
R1, well, with, with just this state right here. So I'm going to have a transition on 0 to that. Okay. Now let's do 1 from the same state. Well, 1 from the Q machine goes to Q1. So I'm thinking Q1, so the right column. R0 on 1, that goes to R2. So I'm thinking Q1, R2, which is this bottom state way down here. So now let's do another pair. Q0, R1. Well, no matter what I do in uh, this left column on 0, I'm going to stay in the left column because of the self-loop here. So Q0, R1, I'm going to be Q0 no matter what. So what does R1 do on 0? Well, it stays where it is because R1 self-loops on 0. So that means I need to self-loop here. And then what does it do on 1? Well, Q0 always goes to Q1, the right column, and R1 stays where it is because, again, it has another self-loop on 1. So I'm going to have a 1 transition over to here. Now let's do this bottom one. Q0, again, stays in Q0. R2 is going to have a self-loop on 0 and 1, so this is going to self-loop on 0. All right, uh, and let's do transition on one. Q0 goes to the right column again. R2 stays with R2. So like with the other state with R1, I'm gonna have a transition that just goes right. Cool. So let's look at this state now, Q1, R0. Well, Q1, well, it self-loops on everything. So no matter what, if I'm in the Q1 column, I'm gonna stay there. So Q1, I'm staying in, in the Q1 column. R0 on 0 goes to R1. So I'm going to go here on 0. Let's see. Where do I go on 1? I go to R2 from that same state. Q1, R1, where do I go? So Q1, I stay in Q1. R1, I stay in the same state. And if we look at this pair, actually, it self loops on 0 and 1. So here I'm going to self loop on 0 and 1. Okay. So then we handle that pair. Let's do this pair. Well, again, both states self loop on 0 and 1. So let's self loop on 0 and 1. Pretty easy. Well, the only thing that's left is to do, of course, the final states. Well, what are the final states here? Well, notice we're doing union of the two languages. Well, what does that correspond to? Well, if, let's look at, say, Q1. If we happen to be in Q1, well, because we're doing union, I don't care what the other machine was in. As long as I'm in Q1, that is a final state. So these three states on the right are going to be final states. And a similar argument for R1. If I'm in R1, I don't care what the other machine's in because it's in the union. So every state with an R1 in it is a final state, which the only one left is this one. Okay? Well, let's actually check to make sure that this is actually right. I guarantee it is right, but let's actually just look at the DFA. Well, we, we can notice several things. We can notice several things. Well, this state and this state are completely unreachable. So we might as well just imagine that they're not there. It's good for practice with the product construction to always put them in because sometimes you actually do need them all. But let's see, let's see what happens. Well, suppose I come down the one route from the start state. Well, here in this state, I self loop on everything. So if it starts with the one, um, then it clearly is accepted. Well, let's see. If it starts with a zero, well, I, I fulfilled the L1 condition, so I don't even need to look at the L2 condition. So that means that if it starts with the zero, it's always going to be accepted. And if it starts with the one, 
is going to always be accepted because it satisfies the L2 condition. So that means the only string that doesn't satisfy both of those conditions is the empty string. Well, let's look. The state that is only reachable from the start state that is not accepting is the start one. And consequently, I don't accept the empty string. So I can actually verify that this is actually correct. So this is a nice short example of how to use the product construction.